Get some new dowel pins here so we can actually slap it on. I didn't want to use the old one because they were actually wasn't able to flush in. But with this one, it seemed like a little bit more tighter issue with the cam T300. I'm not sure it's just maybe the camshaft itself. But let me go and try to put the original uh, stock camshaft in there and see if it has the same. Because I measured the the uh, the length of the cylinder head height, which is goes from here to here and the Tata one. It was the same as the SSPG one. The only difference again was. Um, the SSPG one was the valves are set apart a little bit more inner more because of the shorter lobes I mean the shorter rocker arms. So let me find out if I can put the um, The original camshaft and it still has that same see that gap right there. It doesn't want to push close You see there I see So this one's even let me oh let me resuscitate this a little bit more So it doesn't really want to push close. So this one's even more tighter even with the broken in chain that we had when I say broken in, I mean, you know, broke in. Okay, so this one's even tighter to not close all the way. So let me see if I can actually just put the original camshaft one in and see if I, how much I can close on this one, okay? I almost feel like deja vu, like I've been through this before. <laughs> all right, so here we go. I'm gonna take this guy back off, the Tata T300. And I believe we still have our timing set because it's very important because we still want to test this with the correct timing because we need to spin the flywheel and see if it ever hits at any point during the timing okay so we're going to go ahead and loop it on here and we actually this is a very snug fit so we have to make sure did i just put back the t300 did i pick up the l i just put back the t300 sorry all that talking and here i go i put back the t300 so what i'm going to do now is go and grab this guy here Yeah, this one seems a little bit more smaller. Maybe we'll just keep this guy in here, who knows. Kind of mix it up a little bit. But I'm not sure how much smaller, let's see. If it's still the same kind of push and shove, then we might need to clamp it down with the 54 millimeter, uh, 57 millimeter rocker arm on the Tata one. Yeah, this guy's still kind of snug, which I expected it anyway. Okay, let me go ahead, is it in there? Let me make sure it's wedged in there. I don't want to spin it because it'll take me off timing. <sighs> All right, so I think, yeah, it's in there now. Okay, so this one we had before like this. Yeah, it's the same thing. I think it has to do, what, not with the camshaft, but with the cylinder head. Uh, so I'm not sure why. I did measure it. I thought it was the same as the SSPG one. The height of it, meaning from here to here and also where the rocker arm lobes are right here underneath. So that was measured already and they were about the same. So this is the Tata 232 cylinder head here with the big port. And we're gonna try to see if we can get to work with SSPG without being clicked on. So let's just gonna do um, a dry fit. Well, it's not dry anymore, but it's gonna be dry as much as we can. Okay, so we got the double base gasket still on there. We got our metal gasket in between the cylinder head gasket and the cylinder jug. So let's go ahead and put the Tata one back on. Try and use everything Tata here for the cylinder head part, top in, with the rocker arm assembly. Okay, line it up. I think we're off by a tooth here. So let me go ahead and swing it counterclockwise a tooth. Nope, gotta be almost, wow, uh, almost gotta be perfect. All right, there we go. Now we have to twist it forward a little bit just to be able to beat all this guy in here. Sorry, my camera phone I always die on me. So I don't want to jam the chain or anything. I'm trying to work with my hands. Okay, now there we go. Now I can slide it back. I got it all into his teeth, supposedly. This now, this thing looks still kind of awkward. Yeah, even though this is flushed already, there's no more flush we can do. This looks like way off by a T. So let me take this off this chain rail. Okay, go back to clockwise the teeth. All right, let's put it back in now. No, it's still off by a teeth. All right, so let's see if this one will do it. All right, now we can bring it back in. See, so it's still off a little bit. You can see the alignment that's not perfect. So I need to get this clown clockwise again. 
many times rotating this guy here. Alright. Alright, I'm thinking this would be it. Alright, this would be pretty much the best. Okay, so now we're gonna have to put some pressure. And unfortunately the pressure is gonna come in the form of the rock arm assembly. There you go. This one's the line now you can see here. See the two smaller holes? See I can't show it to you, but you see the lighting. Let's see if I can lighten it. Hmm. Yeah, but they're flush. I can see both of them are flush evenly. All right, so now it's time to actually put the rocker arm assembly and have it bolt down and force that side of the rocker arm here on this side, swindle down a little bit so you can see how tight that is. Wow, that's tight. And we're not sure if that's maybe what's causing our problem here, but it might be opening the gap forcefully and letting the oil mixture come into the piston here because it's grabbing this side right here the whole thing maybe let's see all right. okay, that's just a theory all right so let's go ahead and put our 57 millimeter Taylor rocker arm on there this is the original rocker arm this is the new Tata one make sure the EX is on the bottom make sure the EX is on the bottom and also you might want to make a pelvic this up because it sometimes gets locked into the lobe uh, okay, our dowel pins are in place. Two dowel pins, one on, one on top here, one in the bottom opposite corners. Okay. And make sure. There we go. Okay, see the lobes are free. Not for long. Oh, look at this guy. Now I need to, for him to, there we go. All right. Okay, so you can see there's pretty good alignment here. I did the alignment just almost pretty good. Can't tell, sorry about the lighting. And this one right here, see how it goes in like that? It needs to squeeze itself. I'm afraid if I put more tension, one or two things will happen. It'll either break the chain, which will have another problem. We'll have to uh, pretty much remount the chain again. But we really want to just test out to make sure our lobes there we go. Forcefully. It's supposed to go in there. Okay. This is just way too much. I'm kind of afraid here. I mean, SSPG at least gave us a little bit more slack, you know? This one looks like we're going to force it down. But let's do it. Let's drive it down and see what happens. Hopefully I won't regret it. But... We'll never know unless we try it, right? So here we go. Cam chain tensioner on this thing is incredibly tight. We don't even need to put the cam chain tensioner on to test this. It's gonna put a little bit more pressure. So let me go and get a washer. Flat side, flat side. <clears throat> okay, I'll just go ahead and push, put some pressure here first, get these guys on here on this side. Another one on here. Oh, double washer there. Just use it for this side, I guess. Okay. Squeezing it first, tighten it by hand. Just get most of the thread in there. All right, then we got this side here. Again, this one we can worry about tightening last. We really just want to get this side in. That way we can actually gap it get these two, two guys screwed in eventually but I think for this one we could just use the rocker arm as our measuring if we're hitting the head or not okay here we go tighten them evenly so far not, not a guarantee here but the other one wasn't a guarantee either we made the engine cranked over even with such a tight cam chain uh, again this is supposed to be the cam chain for the 180 uh, given the length of it 
um, and this should be a standard size not standard sorry it's not supposed to be it's not a 90 it's a 96 so it should be enough length there normally would work should have worked okay so here we go we keep tightening it I'm going to pay attention to make sure it's going down As you can see this one's rising up which is fine. We're going to do a star pattern shortly. As soon as we see here, the chain is really tight now. Okay. Okay, you can see here I can spin this with hand now. That's no problem here. star pattern now it looks like it's closing this is a good sign this one I could do by hand until it gets all the way still has a little bit of tension so just needs a socket here you can see here it's closing amazingly enough see there it's forcing the bearings to sit now onto the cylinder head slot there for the camshaft so it's it's closing but very unassuringly there you go okay this guy's loose now this guy's way loose twist this one by hand okay this is getting very very tight okay this is tight imagine and we're still going to use the fill gauge to actually gauge it now the reason why is we need to know where it's going to hit the lobe see this is so loose because this is the one that actually is pushing the valves onto it so actually what you do to test this will actually even put the bowl lobes even though it's time we're going to put it smack so there is no there is no gap at all because we want to see the worst scenario if it was to be fully closed okay okay I think it's okay I think it's pretty snug now there's no more see there it's compressed it's in there this chain is in there just what's causing it to gap like that if it was to gap all the way huh so the main concern is this thing right here, it's not a good seal. We didn't have a good uh, cylinder head sealed on that metal gasket. That's what probably would cause the leak coming from our cam chain area, sipping in back into our cylinder piston combustion chamber, which um, it was kind of our fault, my fault. I should have took it out and did it the right way where took out the gasket and resprayed it. Because when we moved it so many times back and forth, eventually, it's going to cause that. So anyway, we got this sealed here. Let me go ahead and uh, while it's on top dead center, let's just make sure. Let's look at the other side real quick and see if it's still top dead center. If it hasn't moved yet, it's slightly moved. Okay, no problem. No problem. We got that down. So let's go and spin this. Whoa. You hear that spin? Okay, oh wow, it jumped right back to top dead center, like right on there. Okay. So you can see that it's spinning right there. Okay. Alright, so it's right there. It's where the T mark is. Let's go a little bit more. Alright, so it just, wow, just spin right on there. Okay, so we have to probably spin this loose anyway. Oh, okay, so this is fine. You can see here how it lines this right here. Now we're on the back side of the top dead center, that's why it's not facing the big circle here. So let's go and get the big circle facing forward us, like right here, and then we'll come back. So right now it's just showing the Tata back in. So it's the other cycle of the timing. So let's go and get this mark on the one more pass. And we're gonna look for a click too, just to see. Let me get these wires out of the way because you might distract us from Okay, clamp that one down. It's spinning a little bit more freer than the SSPG one, to be honest with you. 
but I don't keep my hopes up yet. Okay, let me go in. Yeah, it's been so much more freer. Okay. Whoa. All right, let's see if it hits that. Can I aim for perfection, huh? A little bit more coming from top. Counterclockwise. Uh, clockwise. Uh, that's about right. Okay, let's see the big hole spacing. Not yet. We kept on missing the big hole. So one more turn. Coming back for that slot and same T. See that? Almost spins for freely on its own. There we go. Almost there. A little bit more clockwise. Almost a breather, really. It's about right to you. Maybe a little bit more dab up. Just a little bit clockwise turn. Can't really tell a nose, but sometimes it's wig room. But that's the closest we can get to our perfect T right there. Marking. So again, we want this actually. We want this, not the actual T itself, which I originally thought, but it's actually this marking right here. Right after the T, that little line right there. That line right there needs to come and meet with this timing mark right here. So I think we got it. Smack right there the line is. Okay, now this should actually face where the big hole is protruding out now. Great, there it is. Big hole is protruding out. Our timing mark looks almost dead on perfect. You see that slash? Those two slide slashes on the wall. Again, when we put some pressure on here too, I'm not sure it might drag it slightly. But it didn't do it for us last time, so I don't expect for us to do it again because our cam chain has a unique placement where it's so super, super tight. All right, so now it's time to actually dry this. See, because this is so loose right now, it's not really, you know, popping the valve cover. So let me go ahead and get this guy drive in so there's no space at all. So it automatically hits. Now, you don't want to force it or nothing like that. You just want to tighten it where... I'm not, I just want it to touch where there's no there's no valve space. Okay? So that's touching there. See that? I can't wiggle it. So that's definitely there. Same thing with the same thing with the exhaust side here. This is how we're gonna test our piston valve clearance by by feel for right now. And then we're gonna put in our engine and find out <laughs> how it does. There you go. I don't want to force it in there. I just want to, for it not to have any gap. See that? There's no gap. You can see it right away. This one has a little bit of space now. You can wiggle it. I'm trying to go in. There you go. Not forcefully. Just not there. Okay. So there's no, there's no bouncing more tippeting here, and there's no more tippeting here. So now let's spin it and listen carefully to see if we can hear that if the piston's actually hitting our valves are hitting the piston and you can see the resistance if it is the case so let me go ahead and spin it and we'll find out listen very carefully I'm gonna be quiet here for this whole time <laughs> sorry there was a spider there peeping at me I'm not hearing anything, are you? I'm not hearing any of the valves are hitting and the valves are moving. You can see here, they're being rocked. See that? They're going up and down. So let me come a little bit closer on this side so you can see what's going on. I'm gonna spin this right here still. And we'll listen for it. My spin, yeah, I'm spinning the right direction.
Well, it actually spins more freer than the SSBG cylinder head. All right, so what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna open it up and actually inspect it to see how dirty the markings are. If it did scrape the piston, we can see because remember again, the piston was pretty pitch black. I mean the piston, yeah, the piston for the most part was pitch black. I wish we had a little bit more pitch black on the exhaust. I mean for the intake side, but the exhaust was pitch black. So if it did scrape it, we'll know right away. So we normally would use a clay trick or a permanent marker or whatever the case to mark the piston and see where it touches on the valve. But in this case, since our piston's already been dirty uh, from all the molded oil burnt in it, we can use that as an indicator which one is a more of a clean scrape than we can actually see. So we're, let's go and unbolt everything and let's see. But so far, I mean, I'm not hearing anything click. I mean, it's good. It's a good thing. I mean, the valves are at its closing point and it's still not doing anything I can't even feel it either it's just smooth again it's less resistant than on the SSPG one so I guess it's a good thing all right so let's go ahead and crack it open and really find out what's going on same way uh, star pattern removal I'm probably going to go in the hardware store and get some new M12 bolts or something like that. These ones look like they're about to wear out. Bring like an example of one. Alright. You can see here now that I, we kind of tighten it down like this, it almost interlocks itself. Yeah, this guy needs to be broken off a little bit more. Yeah, so the T300 Tata cam chain. This actually might work. The 232 cylinder head with the SSBG on the B case. Now the 54 millimeter A case might be a different story. Even if you got the right cylinder head, uh, you still need to probably do some clearance check. Something with the B case, I was told it has a little bit more uh, piston and valve clearance. So it's something to do with the a, uh, B case. That's all it is. It's not nothing. A lot of people say that shouldn't matter if it's A or B case, but there's something made for the B case that's a little bit more clearance in that tolerance in the piston and valve clearance section. Okay, let's go and take everything off and find out. Back to loose again, of course. Oh, because our timing. Uh, let's go and get this back to timing mark, right? Well, we already loosened it, so there's no point now. All right. That's okay. We're not checking our valves or nothing like that or valve lash okay here we go this comes off a little bit more easier let's inspect to see if there's any issue of indents or anything maybe the retainers made it a little bit easier spin i don't know the titanium retainers so let's go ahead and take this off i don't think that factors into it but it did feel less resistance though it almost wants to spin like it was asking for us to spin it okay so let's go ahead and there we go here we go Oh, it's protruding. Yeah, let's go and yeah, we we'll probably want to bring it back top dead center because the piston. Oh boy, one of the dial powers look like it's gonna look at this guy right here. Always trying to be trouble, right? Grab him. Okay, let's go ahead and get the piston coming out. And let's see if our even our valves get touched. Mm-hmm. So far our valve looks pretty clean to me. But let, let me double check. Let me hold this down while I spin the piston top dead center. There we go. That's your top dead center right here. If you Because you can't see it, that's why you're relying on that mark. But this, this right here should be around the top dead center area. Your piston. So, see when I keep spinning it more, it retrudes back. I don't want to do it too much because the cam chain is not fully extended. So it might put some wear on the cam chain. Crushing it in between. Let me go and open this by back up again. Let me do it one more time, just show and show you. And then we'll go to our T mark to see if it actually is around there. 
All right, let's just pull this guy out. We don't need you right now anyway. So let's look at this one, inspect it. I don't see a smudge of motor oil landed on it at all. It looks pretty clean, like brand new. So it's, valve clearance might be okay. And now let's look at this one here. See if it scraped the top or the bottom. So far, so good. I'm not seeing any issue here on top. I don't see any new scrape marks, do you? No, this could be, yeah, this could be a spatical. I don't think that's a scrape mark. I'm not seeing the bottom exhaust either. Okay. And we did set our tap it to push at our highest point there too. So let me go ahead and get this to show you here. Top dead center. Okay. See there, it has some, okay, this might be, well, can't tell because it's so dark, right? Let me go and hold the chain here a little bit and spin it. Because I need to hold the chain. I need to hold the chain. I need to hold the cylinder jug in place because I don't want to force the... Well, actually, the piston is probably not going to be forced out because this gasket sealed. It's just gluing it on there anyway. But just to make sure. All right, there we go. Look at that. Well, maybe because it has oil now. Maybe that's why it smooth so maybe the SSPG would have done the same for us okay I'm trying to flush it now if you go any more it's gonna actually retract back so I'll leave it here and let's go and see if our T is still at the marking what's going on my teeth are taut oh I'm spinning it that's why oh, oh, oh. all right all right lock into place lock into place Okay, let's see where our T is. Look at that. See, that's why we can tell how, this is actually our true top dead center right here. So it's just almost smack between the T and the line, right? If that's what we're lo accurately looking at. So it's smack right there in the middle. So if we do want to align it next time for our real true T mark timing. That's highest point, probably between the T line and that little line right there. Like, so it'll be like, like right there. Between the T line and that little line slashed pocket right there. Okay, so I'm not hearing any bad noise at all coming from it. I think we're ready to go ahead and clean it up and assemble it and see how this bad boy fires up, so. Hopefully you guys can catch me doing that in the next video. Uh, right now I'm going to do is focus on cleaning up, scraping this off, and uh, getting everything to prepare for our initial installation of the Tata 232. We're going to take out the exhaust studs here, you know, do the two thread switch, I mean two thread bolts switch again, and take this off and transfer it over to our new Tata one. And in the meantime, I was going to show you also uh, how to change the SSPG uh, Viton seal. So let me go and do that. That way at least I can show you guys how to do that if you guys ever decide to. Here's those are SSPG. Let me make some room here to clear out some other stuff. So we're gonna go and change it to some SSPG Viton seals. We're gonna use our tool that we had to take off the, the other stuff. There we go. Here's the tools here. And let's go ahead and put that on there and we can see how to actually remove the Viton seals. I mean remove the valve seals, valve stem seals, and replace them with SSPG Viton seals. Let's see if I can get a good shot here, good head shot. Okay, a little cluttered but that's okay. We'll get everything squared away. Main focus on getting this blue Viton seal, SSPG, onto the Tata one. Just get that out of the bag. Comes with a set, comes with two. They're made by SSPG, these Viton seals. And we're gonna put them in our Tata 232. Stop here. Okay, first of all, remember how to push these out. 
So we're going to take a little rubber guy here underneath. Make sure it gets fit in here because we don't want it to pop out. I'll show you how it looks like the valves when it's popped out. We're going to use the tool again. This is, to, this is to reinsert it back and this is actually to take off originally because it doesn't have a spring. It's just going to pop out and freely loosen inside here. That's why this gap is a little bit bigger. And this one is to retract it in, hold it in place, kind of guide it. See, this one has spring load and this one doesn't. It might have spring load on the other end, I don't know. But we're going to take this off first because that's what we have to do first. Make sure our, our round little seal here is on there. I'm going to start off from one side here. Hopefully my hand's not going to cover you. I'm going to try to do a, a raw test here. Hopefully it's not covering you. Or I can go like this. That way I can, you can see exactly what I'm seeing. Every detail here. Okay, so I'm going to put some pressure here. All right, this is going to open in. Because we're going to, you know, crush our titanium there. You might want to put a little bit more pressure than I can do right now. Because I'm trying to... There we go. You'll feel it come loose. There's little teeth here that's locking it in. The retainer teeth. I call them the retainer teeth. There should be two pieces right there. Just drop them off. Okay, and then you can pre-put them ahead of time if you want to prepare it for insertion. So I can do that right now. See that? I'm sorry. See the small end just dives in. had dived in. There we go. I right, take the other one back off first. What you could do is just hold these two in place. We gotta put them in evenly sort of. They're kind of cone in there, right? So kind of drop them off at the same time. There we go. I'm sorry. Here we go. See, I held them in place. I'm just going to drop them off. Or I try to drop them off. <laughs> or you can do this. Get a magnet and cheat like I would probably cheat. So let me go and get my little magnet here. We'll line them up. Ugh. Magnet is strong. Stronger than my hand. Uh, one of them actually came in. You might not need it, but... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Okay, so we're going to go and put this guy in here. I'm going to try to see if I can do it without the magnet. Okay, there we go. I could do it. I think my finger was just getting fatigued. Okay, so anyway, that's ready. So we're going to move one out just to show you. And Tayden usually comes...